Kitchen. Today, me and Primo are making Neapolitan pizza dough. I've had a lot of requests on how I make my pizza dough, so I'm going to show you how to do that right now. Let's get started. So, what we're going to do is start off with our liquid. I've got 780 grams of bread flour. I'm going with the 60% hydration, so I need approximately 470 grams of water. So there's my water, it's about two cups. I have a teaspoon of dry yeast. And what I like to do is just whisk it up a little bit. I want this to get dissolved 100% into the liquid. It takes just a few seconds. There we go. Now, 780 grams of flour. All right, we're gonna to go to the stand mixer. I'm gonna go ahead and start mixing the, uh, the flour, the water, and the yeast. I have a dough hook on. I'm gonna put it on number two speed. And as soon as this gets incorporated, most of the water is absorbed, I'm going to add in two teaspoons of sea salt. So now I'm going to slowly put this in. I just set a timer for 10 minutes. That's all the ingredients for our pizza dough. I just wanted to take a minute to talk about what flour I'm using today. So ideally you would use a uh, double zero flour, preferably from Italy, organic if possible. I'm using the King Arthur bread flour, organic. It has a 12.7% uh, protein content. And this does a really good job. Uh, right now, with the pandemic, it's just hard to get flour. I'm even having a hard time getting this. So, uh, the other day I made focaccia with just an organic, all-purpose flour. It works. Ideally, you'd like to use a double zero pizza flour from Italy. Anyway, I'm going to let this finish up and we'll come back. So again, 10 minutes on two. I've got about three minutes left before the stand mixer is done so I just wanted to talk about how I store my yeast so I put it in a vacuum sealed pack I keep this in the fridge I don't know that that's necessary but that's what I do and uh, so I buy I don't know if it's a pound at a time I buy mine through Amazon but it's available in stores so as I use this I reseal the pack this stays in my pantry and this is just a uh, dry yeast. I find it works well for my focaccia and pizza. So anyway, that's how I store my yeast. And we're down to two more minutes. I've already got some flour on my counter. It's been washed. My hands are clean. As soon as the mixer's done, again, that was for 10 minutes. We'll transfer it onto the surface and I'm going to hand knead it for about 10 more minutes and then we'll let it rise for about two hours before we portion it out. I don't know if you can hear it, but my kitchen timer has gone off. So we're at 10 minutes. Now I'm gonna transfer the dough right onto my countertop. Again, I've got flour down already. And we're gonna heat, excuse me, hand knead this nice and clean. 
Uh, of course, I'll wash that. We're going to hand knead this for about 10 minutes. So just to give you a general idea of how I like to knead, I just grab it. I'm holding it with one hand, pulling it, rolling it back, pull it, roll it, and then I go the other way. So I'll do this for 10 minutes. And at some point, you won't need all that flour, so you can just push it off to the side. So, you get the general idea now. I mean, again, this is nothing new. You could use two hands if you like. It's generally what I do. A little bit of pressure on it. So, I'll continue this for about another nine minutes, or until I feel the consistency is right. And we're looking for it to get nice and smooth. At some point, I'll give it a stretch test to see if it's tearing real easy. And uh, we'll come back as soon as I finish kneading my pizza dough. So I hand kneaded the dough for approximately eight more minutes. And there we go. It feels nice. Has a nice aroma. We should be at about, whoops. At about 1250 grams, we're at 1270. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put this, <coughs> excuse me, in my bowl, and I'm going to cover it and let it sit for two hours. Now, traditionally, if <coughs> I'm doing a traditional Neapolitan pizza and I want to keep things really authentic, I'll get five dough balls out of this at approximately 250 grams each. Um, I'm looking to divide this into four, so we're going to go about 300 grams each. <clears throat> um, and it's only because I just want to make four pizzas. So I always make this amount of dough, and I could either make five or four. Um, so that's what we're going to do. So this will sit for two hours. <clears throat> We'll come back and then we'll cut it up into the four portions, we'll roll it and I'll stick it in my containers. From there it'll sit two to four hours and then into the fridge. So real quick, uh, it's Tuesday morning about 9 a.m. I'll use this tomorrow, I'll use two of the dough balls tomorrow. So that's about a 24-ish uh, hour ferment or rise. The other two dough balls I'll use uh, either Thursday, Friday, or Saturday. And that's usually when I prefer to use it. But what's nice is this recipe, it'll make an outstanding pizza tomorrow. And I'll show some pictures of that. But anyway, we're going to let this sit for about two hours. So I've started to make my dough balls after it sat for two hours. <clears throat> and they're about 315 grams each. <clears throat> I'm just going to show you real easy. Just kind of fold it over, right? There's a lot of different techniques out there. So one of the simplest ones right there. Fold it over. Pinch the bottom. You want to seal it. And then you could come around. Hopefully you could see that. Just come around. I like to get a little flour on the bottom. And I have these containers when I'm trying to do several days of cooking versus putting it in one plastic container. So there you go. From there, what I like to do is take a piece of saran wrap and just lightly cover it. These get stacked too high, so I put a cover. I'll stack it. Obviously, I'll put a piece of saran wrap on this one. And I'll store them stacked too high in my fridge. Again, before I do that today, though, I'm going to let these sit out another two to four hours. They'll get larger. Uh, they're fermenting a little bit more. Once I stick them in the fridge, that's going to slow that process down. So for right now, I'm going to cover the three others with a piece of saran wrap and leave them out for another two to four hours. I've got my four dough balls covered with saran wrap. And... Hopefully this is the reason why you're watching this dough recipe, okay? There's my Neapolitan pizza. This is leftover. I've heated it up in my toaster oven. 
Let's go ahead and give this a taste. Sorry about that. That's delicious. So there you have it. There's my Neapolitan pizza dough recipe. So again, Neapolitan pizza dough recipe. Um, yeah, I like to put a little salt and pepper, red pepper flakes on the bottom of my plate. So when I pick up my slice, the crust is seasoned a little bit. All right, we're gonna recap. 780 grams of flour. Typically you'd use a double zero. I've got 470 grams of water. That's about a 60% hydration. I had one teaspoon of dry yeast, two teaspoons of sea salt. Now, ideally, when I go to fire up my oven, the day I'm going to cook, it takes about an hour and a half for me to hit a deck temperature of 725 to 750. My dome's about 1,000. I'll remove whatever I want to cook at that time. So an hour and a half to two hours before I'm going to cook my pizza, I'll take my dough out of the fridge. Again, one to five days is typically how I uh, store my dough. Again, I covered it with saran wrap. So there you have it, Neapolitan pizza dough. Ciao.